All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be talking about generalizing the Lorentz algebra. So as we've seen before, I'm going to repeat myself, but the Lorentz, al the Lorentz algebra comes from uh, tr the transformations that maintain or that render the Minkowski metric invariant. So again, the Minkowski metric comes out of special relativity, and from the, from preservation of this metric, we're getting an algebra or the series or the group of transformations that again render that metric invariant. And so without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Before we get into this, this video though, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you like this kind of content, also you can go onto my Patreon page where you will find uh, early content and soon to be exclusive content on there as well. Anyways, let's get into the content. So we are generalizing the Lorentz algebra today. And in doing that, Here's sort of the, the mind map we want to keep in mind, right? So we start we started off with our our boosts and our rotations, which are these guys right here. These are the generators. These are the things that when you exponentiate them, you get your standard rotation matrices and so forth. And so we group these guys into what we did is we grouped them into these n matrices, right? And so these n matrices were two linearly independent groups of matrices that consisted of a specific combination, and I'm realizing right now, there needs to be a minus right here, uh, but this consisted of a combination, a linear combination, of um, these two guys right here. And there's two of them, right? There's uh, one that's identified as a, a plus uh, a group, and one that's identified as a minus group in the superscript. And so we went on and we, we said, okay, we're going to take the plus and the minus groups, and we're going to say uh, where one can be uh, one dimensional, the other one can be two dimensional, both can be two dimensional. Right? So in this case, we have one of them being two dimensional, the other one being one dimensional uh, representations again. Uh, and then we have these, this guy here, with just the opposite way around. So you can imagine, say, this slot here is the n plus slot, and then this slot here is the n minus slot, right? So same thing here, n plus slot and the n minus slot. And in doing this, we find out that we can break apart the representations, right? We break apart this representation, or this group of transformations, into two sub-representations, and these sub-representations transform in different ways. They rotate in the same way, but they boost in different ways, and they boost according to the exponentiation of their generators. Okay, and so these things, what we're going, what we're saying here is that uh, these essentially are the groups of transformations that will act on spinners. Okay, and then what we said was, okay, we can also construct a one half one half representation. And this one half one half representation uh, can be thought of as bringing these two guys together. All right, so we have the one half coming from over here and the one half coming from over here, and we can think of this as uh, one or one half zero zero one half representation. And we sort of define this to be the case, and we say, well, okay, the union of these two spinners uh, is going to create another representation, or that the union of these two spinner transformations is going to create another representation. That representation is going to is actually a vector. What we found out is that this representation acts on four vectors. The four vectors specifically, however, were casted in a way in which quaternions were very useful to describe them. Okay. So this is the review. So now we want to take a look at this branch off point up here. We're going to say, what we want to do here is we want to say that the generators, these J generators and these K generators, again, these are the rotations and the boosts, the J generators we're going to define in this way, and the K generators we're going to define in this way. Well, how does this work? So these generators are... Uh, so the, the generators of the SU2 uh, representation, so these guys right here, are now, uh, is now this, 
right? So this guy here is what we define to be J I. This guy here is K I. All right. And so th this is an interesting thing, right? Because um, what we're saying is we're trying to merge these things and the J and the K's into one uh, one matrix, if you, if you will. And the matrix is this, right? So we have um, the J one. If we're divine, if we're defining J in this way, J one. So this is going to be a one. This is going to be a two and a three, or a three and a two. And then we can order these guys. This is the the uh, Levi Levi Shavita symbol. And what we find is that this is what our generators look like. So J1 is equal to M23 or the negative of M32. So the matrix right there looks like this. Okay. And then we can do the same thing. J2 is a matrix element, 3, 1, or the negative 1, 3. And likewise here. So J3. And then K, the Ks we defined, again, up here to be the zeroth, uh, the zero ith component of um, of this matrix. Right, so these are the temporal parts. This is what we're calling. These are the boosts, right? And the boosts are uh, we see them in the first columns, in the first in the first row, in the first columns. These guys right here. And we notice also that there's no Levi Chavita symbol up in this guy because, and we'll see why that's the case, but. You can see the difference here is that we have minus signs on these guys. It doesn't really matter which one the minus sign is on. It just matters that there has to be at least one. And then, uh, but notice here that these are both positive. Okay, so this is so we've we've come to a point where we say, okay, how much more of this generalizing can we do? Well. Um, we, we now, in casting them as these M matrices, we now are sort of put in a place where we kind of have to redefine what the Lorentz algebra is. And this is it, right? So there, we're not going to derive this. Deriving this, I think, is quite tricky, actually. So I'm just going to give it to you, and then we're going we're gonna to have an example here. So the example is, okay, let's take a look at M23 and M31. Okay, what's that? That M M two three two three. So that's J one and three one. That's J two. Okay. So I'm just gonna write up here J one and J two. So we want to take the commutation between these two guys. So we fill in all of the. Uh, all the subscripts, right? So two is mu, or so here, so mu's, I'll zoom in a little bit. So mu's have to be two, right? So two uh, right here in this mu, and then we have mu and mu, two and two. And you can see how this goes, right? So we just fill in all these numbers. Whatever you put in for mu here, you put in for mu here. Whatever you put in for nu here, you put in for nu here. Row and sigma also. And then we say, okay, well, this has to go to zero, this has to go to zero, and this has to go to zero, because this is just the Minkowski metric, right? The Minkowski metric is only non-zero along the diagonal. Everything else is zero. So this is not, this is off diagonal, off diagonal, on diagonal, and off diagonal. So all the off diagonals go to zero. We see this right here. And then M, we have minus M21, well, that's just M12. And what's M12? Well, that's I, J, 3. So this works. You can do this for, it. you try this out for J, say like J3 and J2. You can do this for multiple examples. What you'll find out is that this formula actually works as a new definition for the Lorentz algebra. Right? So how can we verify this? Well, we can verify this by saying, okay, well, let's take the commutation relationship between these two guys, which is, which is kind of what we did up here. We just did it in, in terms of M3. Well, when we do that, right, we put in the formula for JI and uh, JJ, right? So the only difference here is 
here's i so this is what so i and i so i is right here and then j we flip the j right so we flip i and j here and this has to be an i instead of a j okay we could factor the one half out and we get we get this guy right here this guy right here now i j and j i well these two guys are flipped so i can factor this guy out and just put a negative right here and when i put a negative right there well this is whenever we have a negative in the commutation relationship you could try this out for yourself but you can essentially take this out and you could say well this is what the commutation relationship looks like okay well if we look back up here if we look back up here or this example, but we can look back up here. This, but to take a look here, right? So this actually led to this guy. So this guy actually is the, is this J K, right? So this is going to be I J K, and then we have I J K and one half and this is the Lorentz algebra right we have this factor of one half out here it's this is really just a constant we don't have to really care about it that much but the general structure here is it it actually comes back to uh it, it actually this is the Lorentz algebra okay so the idea again is we have this new definition of what it means to be a Lorentz algebra. This is a more general definition because we've packed everything now into matrices. So the elements, so these guys were matrices, but we've just packed, um, we've packed them all into, we've sort of condensed a number of matrices essentially. And in doing that, things became, it looks, it looks like things became a little bit more complicated because of this new definition, but uh, this is going to lead us into an area where we will begin to understand what infinite or what uh, infinite dimensional representations of Lorentz algebra look like, and that's going to lead us into understanding Poincaré transformations. And then from there, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to sort of veer away from talking uh, talking about maintaining the Minkowski metric, and we're going to start talking about the uh, maintaining La, um, Lagrangians. Sorry, I blanked on the word there. How, uh, and so when, and that's going to lead us into physics, right? So up until this point, we've been talking a lot about math. This is a lot of very essential math, though. The mathematics behind the, uh, all of these symmetries, all of these represent, uh, we, we're talking about exactly what a representation is. We're talking about symmetries. This is all the math that we're, that we need to use in order to understand what it means to actually uh, render a Lagrangian invariant. And so with that being said, this is a relatively short video. I hope you like this kind of content. If you do, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Also make sure to visit my Patreon page if that is if this is the kind of stuff you're interested in. So I'll see you guys in the next one.